Hi guys, I am Ashutosh and today I am back with another video on NPM packages. So in this video I am going to talk about what are the most popular and best NPM packages that are used by developers in front-end, back-end and different kinds of full-stack development areas. So previously I, I, I created a video on best NPM packages for animations and many people commented that we want to know what are the most popular NPM packages. So here it is. So the first package that we are going to review is React. So without this package, you cannot create React.js uh, website or uh, front-end with React.js because this package provides us components and uh, hooks that we need to create a React.js website. So, uh, so for example, if you want to create a component, React.js component, you need to extend your component with React component and you need to import this from this npm package that is react apart from that you may need some hooks like use state or use effect or use memo so you can import those hooks as well from react so eventually if you want to create a static or dynamic website using react.js then you will need react npm package another npm package that is related to react react is react dom so dom stands for document object model and uh, you if you want to render your react components that you are creating with react then you will need react dom so what it does is let's say you have created your react component and you want to render that react component over a dom or any particular element of your website in this case uh, node then you can render it using react dom so you can import a react dom component from react dom npm package and then you can render it on that particular element also you can create a dom server where you will convert your render to string and you can pass your react components and it will uh, create a server based on that so react dom is also very used and most popular and one of the most popular npm package that uh, front-end developers use the next npm package is env so uh, this npm package is used uh, to hide a secret information that you uh, want to avoid exposing to uh, many people mostly in case of open source project or if you are working in uh, a big organization and many people are part of that project then you can use this so the use of env is uh, you will create a .env file in which you will pass the information or the parameters that you want to use in your website and you can use those parameters in your website uh, with this with this keywords like process.env dot the parameter name if you have uh, defined the parameters like this so this dot uh, env is used when you have some secret keys or some tokens that you want to pass to your api and you don't want to ex expose this to a larger audience then you you can create a dot env file but you can put that dot env file in git ignore and this file won't be pushed into your repository but it will be used locally so that you can use it whenever you want to use it but it won't be exposed uh, to the users which will use your application or your website so this is about dot env now going forward and the next npm package is lodash so lodash is a library from node.js which provides different kinds of methods which you can use to compact your code so for example let's talk about this one so let's say you have an array and you want to slice it into two parts so you can use a method chunk and it will convert your array into two slices so there are different many kinds of this method just not for array but for different use purposes and you can use this lodash library to make uh, to write a compact and more readable code and many uh, developers from many big organizations use this npm package the next npm package is axios so you may have heard about the name axios for api calling so basically it is a promise based http client uh, in simpler words it is used to make an api call so let's say you want to make a get or post request to a particular api then you can uh, use axios.get to create uh, to to call an api and get the response as well as errors also it will 
you can use axios for synchronous api call or asynchronous api call and asynchronous call will directly re return response in the function and asynchronous call will return a promise which you can use internally to create a response and one of the best use case why axios is so popular and it is used to for api call is multiple concurrent requests so you can create a concurrent request which will fetch the data in uh, multiple threads the next npm package is webpack so webpack is a module bundler so let's say you want to create an npm pack your own npm package package using some code that you have written and you want to uh, publish it on npm so you will need webpack in that case that is one of the use cases of webpack there are many other use cases as well so what webpack does is if you pass your code or your uh, JavaScript files, JavaScript TypeScript files to uh, Webpack. What it does is it will optimize your code. It will convert your code from ES6 to EF, ES5. It will optimize the code and it will create a bundle file which you can directly import or uh, publish to npm package. And Webpack can be used with different uh, front-end frameworks. So let's say you, you are using TypeScript or CoffeeScript or ReactJS or Gatsby. You can use it for, for any front-end or back-end framework. The next NPM package is GraphQL. So GraphQL is mostly, uh, GraphQL is a query language that is developed by Facebook and it is used for fetching the data. So let us say like you have a data on your server that you want to make an API call or let's say you want you have a data locally on your website and you want to fetch it so that rather than writing a data into a file and then reading that file is a very unconventional and uh, in inappropriate way so instead what graphql proposes is you can write this kind of a query which will only fetch the information that you want in the most efficient way if you are using GraphQL, then I would recommend you to use Gatsby framework for frontend because Gatsby provide, provides many plugins internally itself to support GraphQL and it has well documented information of how to use GraphQL in static as well as dynamic websites. The next npm package is Prettier. So Prettier is a auto code formatter. So let's say you have a code and it is not formatted very well then you can use prettier so what it will do is and you can run this command to auto format your code so it will format those files which you are including in your prettier so if you are only including uh, included javascript files so it will only format the javascript files not all the files if you have included json and html files then it will only format those files you can also set up your editor with prettier so that whenever you write a code or whenever the code changes in your file any of the file uh, in your editor then uh, prettier will automatically run and it will auto format the code you can also use prettier with git hooks so that whenever you will create a git commit on your local repository then it will auto format the code in only those files which are changed in that git commit so Prettier is used uh, in many of the open source as well as the community projects where many people are included in single project and they create pull requests. So Prettier is used in order to avoid the multiple changes just due to some adding some spaces in the code and stuff like that. So if you run Prettier on each commit, so, so then those spaces and unnecessary changes will get reverted back so that uh, you, you will get a formatted and minimal changed code. The last npm package that we are going to review today is date fns. From the name itself we can understand that this npm package ha uh, gives us the information about date, time and relative distance and how much time you will take to get from this one to here to there and stuff like that. So it has uh, information or functions related to dates and distance and uh, sub days so you can like if you want to know what what will be the date from 30 days or 40 days from today or what will be the, the day from 40 days from today then you can use this library or use in this npm package to get that particular information also uh, one of the most fascinating thing about date fns is that you can get the date and time information based on the particular locale so let's say you are 
currently in US and you want to uh, get the date of a particular region of US then you can import your date FNS for that particular region or the particular uh, continent and it will give you date and time based on that and you can pass that local as a dictionary parameter in your any of the any of your function that you are using in data fns and it will give you that particular time and date of that region there are many more uh, npm packages as well but these are the most popular and mostly used npm packages that you that you need to know if you want to create a scalable front end or if you want to create a scalable system that you want to use i have given all the npm packages link in the description box below you can you can take a look at them and you can use them in your next project that's it for today guys hit like button if you find this video useful and comment down what you liked the most and what you didn't like in this video you can join my discord server where i post resources and my open source projects you can support me on patreon.com the link is given in the description box below and lastly you can subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon so that you won't miss an update whenever i post a video i will be back with another video soon till then stay safe Thank you.